Well, hey guys, and welcome back to Hey, It's a Good Life. My name is Natalie, and I'm so glad you're here because today we're working on the vermicompost. Do you see this disgusting pile of food? This is how I've been storing my food for the worms. We can do better than this. So today we are gonna upcycle this old coffee can and its lid with just our drill and a regular old drill bit on it. And we're going to make a temporary compost container. Why is this important? Because worms don't like fresh food. They like slightly rotten food. So when you can leave it somewhere to rot a little bit, you're allowing nature to do the work and prepare the food for the worms. So that's kind of what I've been doing by putting this in this mortar that I found for $2 at that rummage sale. But you know, the banana will fall out and that's not really what that's for at all. So I'd much rather make a container with a lid. I think it's gonna work a lot better. I think this um, container is rather beautiful. It's kind of colors that we have in our kitchen. So that's kind of nice. It's obviously very frugal and super functional, beautiful, functional, frugal, all the things I love. So let's get into making this compost container. So now we have our container for the worms. And as I was doing that, I realized we should probably talk about why these holes are important. Now they say you can add fungus to the worm bin and it's fine. I personally prefer not to. So if I can avoid fungus or mold of any kind, I like to. And this is what these air holes are going to do is it's going to allow that air to escape so you're not creating a really moist, mold-friendly environment. Well, hey guys, and welcome back to the worm farm. As you guys know, this is my lovely vermicomposting bin that I got from Gardener Supply, and it was a gift to me for Christmas from my family, and I'm so stoked on it because it's so functional and so beautiful. Unfortunately, we don't have a place to put it inside the house, but it will still make a lovely addition to the garage. So I have not fed the worms in over a month since before we moved. I think the last time I fed them was that vermicomposting smoothie and maybe like a couple apple cores in between. I would just like to show you how easy it is to keep worms alive. If you feel like you have a black thumb or you feel like composting is scary, I wanna encourage you to try vermicomposting because it's very hard to kill worms. They are very, very resilient little creatures. So let's take a look at what's happening inside the bin. Hi, wormies. So as you can see, I have got some lovely worm poop. It's squishy, it's not too dry, it's not too moist. And while we're on the topic of moisture, let's talk about that a little bit because it took me a while to dial that in. Now, fun fact about worms is they can actually drown in too much moisture. So they can handle about 80 to 90% moisture, but anything more than that, they're gonna drown. So you wanna be careful that your bin is not too moist. Now, I feel like, although some people recommend doing smoothies and trying that out, that's what I did the last time and that's fine, but it added so much moisture to the bin that it was literally creating its own little, what's it called? Um, its own little water cycle and it was just dripping wet and I feel like it invited the flies and so we've been kind of combating those. Luckily, not too many have followed us here to the new place. So I am not a fan of the worm smoothie anymore because I feel like it just wasn't that beneficial to my bin. Although it might take them a little bit longer to go through some not smoothied food, I'm okay with that because it reduces the moisture. Some things that you can do to reduce moisture in your bin is simply adding dry material. So you can add things like shredded up Trader Joe's bags like I've done in the past. You can add shredded up paper. You can add leaves. Like there's lots of things that you can add that will be a dry element to help sop up some of that moisture. Um, another fun fact about worms and worm poo is that a worm poo is two microns big. Fun fact for you. Some additional fun facts for you on worms are that they can eat up to their entire body weight in food a day. Also, if you're thinking about vermicomposting, the 
Standard in the industry is Red Wigglers, but there are other options. Um, so far, Red Wigglers have been a great addition to our farm and I'm really happy with them. However, I would like to see more of them. So I'm really hoping that through digging through this today, I'm gonna find a worm ball and that there's going to be evidence of some eggs. If you're interested to see what a Red Wiggler looks like, here's what they look like. Another fun fact for you is that Red Wigglers really don't like light. In fact, most worms don't like light. You probably already knew that. But what you might not know is that they don't mind red light. So if you were to get a red lamp so that you could really hang out with your worms or really inspect what was going on um, and not have them crawl away from you, that would be a way to go is add a red lamp to your garage or wherever you're keeping your worm bin and then you can inspect your worms with a little bit more freedom. Here's what you don't wanna find in your worm bin, plastic. Okay guys, learn from me that I got lazy and I didn't thoroughly check every envelope before I shredded it last time and I shredded some plastic into the bin. Do I think worms are smart enough to not eat this? Yes, because I don't think it's going to be interesting to them. Do I think I'm smart for adding it? Not really. I think that this should be avoided because just in case you don't want your worms to get confused and try and eat it and then die. That's that would suck. Okay, so this is really exciting because there is a lot of poo in here. <laughs> After a month of basically neglecting my worms, praying that they would make it through the move, they have made so much vermicompost. If you're new to vermicomposting, what is vermicompost? Vermicompost is literally, it's worm poo, it's worm castings. It is the byproduct of a process that the worms have gone through with the food. It's compost that worms have made. That's it. Hopefully you're getting the idea here. Worm castings, worm poo. Vermicompost, the final byproduct of worms and food, vermicompost. Now I have tried to make worm tea a couple times. I'm not sure how much success I had because I used dry worm castings. I would imagine that using moist worm castings, live worm castings that were basically just created and that have been living in this biome would be a lot more effective than using the dried worm castings. So something I'm really looking forward to doing this week is making some worm tea, but it's gonna take a couple days before we can do that because we are on city water and FYI, city water has chlorine in it and chlorine is a antibacterial agent, Clorox, bleach, it is basically going to counteract exactly what I want to happen if I were to make worm tea. Okay, so I haven't found a worm ball, but I have found a really tiny worm, which is a very positive sign that our worms are reproducing. Can you guys see how tiny that worm is? That is a really tiny worm. Okay, I've disturbed the worms quite a bit, so rather than continue disturbing them, I'm gonna feed them, close this, and we're gonna call it a day. So now it's time to feed our worms. So what I like to do is obviously use our new container, but what I like to do is I like to make a little trench for the worms, add the food, and then cover that up. Okay, and just a friendly reminder, obviously we want to remove plastic, so be sure to take any banana wrappers off and any labels as well. That's looking pretty good. I could cut some of this up more, but honestly I'm feeling really lazy and we'll be having a little worm party, a little worm dinner party next time I come out here. Gosh, there's just so many worm castings, which is super exciting. I mean, this is just really dense compost material, which is, which is so great. I'm really excited to be having all of this vermicompost material because we're starting the bed soon, you guys. I'm actually surrounded by all the materials that we're using for the raised beds right now, and I really wanna show you guys what we're up to out here. I've given a couple sneak peeks on my Instagram, but for the most part, we're gonna keep it under wraps and then show you the design once it's all said and done and set up in the new garden. All right, guys, that's it for me today. Thanks so much for joining me today as we built a new temporary compost for our worm food and checked on the worms that I had basically neglected for a month. I hope this video encourages you that you too can verb a compost and that it is not that difficult to get started. All you need is a bin and some worms. That's pretty much it. All you really need to get started is a bin and some worms and a little dry material and some leftover food. Four things and you can start vermicomposting and creating your own super rich organic matter for your garden. Thanks so much for joining me today, you guys, and I'll see you next time. All right, worms, I love you.